welcome back and we are going to continue our discussion on the introduction section or the introduction module on our course on electronic packaging and manufacturing. So, we are in lecture number 2 today and if you recall last time we were discussing the electronic module uh, or, or the sorry the introduction module and what you see here is these were the different concepts or topics that are going to be covered. So, what we have done is we were primarily still on the first one. This is more or less done and what we will now do is move on to the next topic which is the crux of this electronic of, of this introduction module is what is it that uh, okay, what is electronic packaging. Okay. So, if I so this is where we were before right and we were talking about the integrated circuit in the last lecture. Now, if you look at this, this is what we discussed and we said that electronic product apart from the VLSI chip or the integrate the microchip with the integrated circuits, it also has a lot of other components all of which needs to come together to form the final product for end use right. And this makes a segue through our discussion on electronic packaging. Okay. What is electronic packaging? So, this is a question that people ask. Okay. And one of the things that from the word packaging that we know, we say that what is electronic packaging? Is it one of these? Okay. Are these the cardboard boxes in which the electronic product has to go so that it can be shipped safely from one place to another or can be stored safely? safely? So, here we are seeing all these. Okay. Is this what electronic packaging means? Because what the word packaging can be a little confusing. Okay. Now, <laughs> the answer is of course, no uh, and that is what I am showing here that no the answer is not this, this is not electronic packaging. Okay. This may be electronic packing, it is the packing materials. It is important, but that is when we talk about electronic packaging, this is not what we mean. Okay. Then what is electronic packaging? If you look at this picture and I would say this is electronic packaging and then you would ask me what? What is this? You are showing me the different components inside a certain electronic product and my answer to that is exactly that is my point friend. My friend this is exactly what I am talking about when I say when I when I use the word electronic packaging. Okay, still confused? Let us see. I am showing a nice mobile smartphone on the left hand side and then inside you see that these are the different components that goes into it starting with with a casing over here which you see this is the casing right there is a battery there is cables and connectors this is the main motherboard with the different components on on, on it okay then you have all these several separate spe separate small small cards and boards daughter cards and daughter boards here okay you have a display so all these go into forming the smartphone that we see here so in order to make the smartphone function as per our expectations number 1 all of these components need to perform their individual functions number 1 number 2 they need to perform their functions in perfect harmony with with each other right all of these functions have to happen in perfect coordination which means that each of these components and again thinking about our smartphone the the main cpu that goes inside the graphics uh, chip or the graphics device the memory, the wireless uh, chip or the wireless the controller, all of the, the display, all of these have to work in perfect harmony. Right? I mean they cannot just be performing their own functions in isolation. So, which means there has to be perfect communication through exchange of signals between these various components inside. Okay. So, 
connection, okay, the different devices talking to each other through what we will learn later as interconnect technologies, that is, that forms an essential, uh, what should I say, essential, that is an essential requirement of a good electronic product. Along with that, you will have a display, you have a casing, etcetera, which protects this, you know, this device from external factors and, and ensures that it performs reliably over its lifespan. Okay. So, electronic packaging is where this all this come together. Okay. Electronic packaging comes into picture, it is a science and a bit of art which converts this microchip, the individual micro devices which bring them together on a common platform and gives it the shape of an usable product. Okay. So, electronic packaging entails all of these. Okay. So, again let us try again to define what is electronics packaging. So, what is electronic packaging if I try to define, I am stating as it is a service and art of providing a suitable environment to the electronic product as a whole to perform reliably over a period of time. And that period of time is the individual expected lifespan of that product. So, what do I mean by that? And let us look at each of these terms. Providing a suitable environment where and when I talk about suitable environment it is within the product. Okay. It is within the product maintaining the conditions such that they perform each of them perform as per their expectations which means they are able to talk and communicate with each other. Okay. They are able to exchange signals and the integrity of those signals is maintained, signal integrity. The power is delivered at the right place at the right point of time from the power generating device okay. and perform reliably, very, very important. It is not enough for your smartphone or for your laptop to perform well today when I start using it. It should perform with the same effectiveness and efficiency and reliability three years from now when I am still using it. The deep performance should not degrade with time or degrade as minimally as possible with time. Okay. So, that is the reliable performance over its lifespan. Okay. That is what I am talking about and electronic packaging, if it is not packaged properly, then we are not going to ensure. Okay. So, electronic packaging does not add any functionality to the device. Okay. The functionalities are defined by the mic micro architecture of the individual components that goes into your product. The CPU has its own function. The functionality is defined by the architecture, the sur integrated circuit that goes into it. Same for memory, same for graphics, but ensuring that they perform as per the expected as per the expectations they perform as per the requirements at that point of time that's what and 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 in perfect harmony with each other that's where packaging comes into picture okay so it's this communication which is what i'm trying to say here it's communication between the different components in a product packaging plays a big role in that and protection from extraneous factors, protection against from harsh environments or adverse environments during its operation, protection from shocks and vibrations, protection from a water splash, protection from overheating. So, these are the two, I mean if you think about it, these are the two main uh, contributions of electronics packaging 
and these are both extremely extremely important and the crux of converting a micro architecture or micro or a series or a, or a series of micro chips with their individual maybe excellent micro architectures converting them bringing them together and converting that into a system or a platform and finally into an usable product that we use today that is electronic packaging so now think about it what does it mean what does it entail it entails that we use the right communication and exchange of signals if you think of the motherboard with several layers of wiring traces inside that's all packaging and you need expertise from electrical engineering and electronics engineering to perform that okay you think of the motherboard again what should be the material if our four fire retardant mo motherboards there are ceramic boards and packages and that is where we will go to material scientists okay we have to ensure that that during its operation the components are cooled adequately so that the temperature at the devices does not exceed their maximum allowable limit and why just devices and components just the product itself when i'm holding a cell phone making a call like this when i'm holding the cell phone it should not be so hot that i cannot touch so i have to maintain the temp ensure that the temperature is maintained not just at the component level but at the product level as well so who do i call upon for that the thermal engineer i also have to ensure that if my laptop just falls on the floor there is minimal damage to that okay so what do i where do i need that we i need the elect the mechanical engineer the applied mechanics engineer to do the kind of analysis the shock and vibration and the stresses uh, and the deformations that it goes through even otherwise when i switching it on and off there are this this whole system has different materials which are undergo expansion and contr contraction leading to stresses and strain in the product you need an in-depth knowledge of solid mechanics to characterize and to analyze and design such a product okay other than that the corrosion in a in a moist environment in a hot and harsh environment do these products corrode what should be the composition of the solder that goes into the into into the into forming this various interconnects again material scientists and chemical engineers so electronic packaging the friends the message i'm trying to say is it's it's a very broad field it's a truly multidisciplinary field requiring expertise from various domains okay and that is a part of that that we are going to appreciate as we go through this course okay and there is one domain that i did not mention which is part of our course title which is manufacturing how do i make all these how do i have all these tiny tiny transistors on a piece of silicon which is 1 cm by 1 cm millions of transistors going into it what are the techniques what are the microfabrication techniques how do i make this interconnect how do i manufacture a motherboard the manufacturing is again the fab the fabrication and manufacturing a very very important part of the electronics industry okay so electronic packaging electronic manufacturing packaging must be all very interrelated with each other packaging design manufacturing and this is all the system level okay all, all also the component level i should say so these are the technologies that make that convert a microchip to a usable product just like the human human body just having the brain is not enough yes the brain brain is like the like the cpu of a computer but then the human body also needs a cardiovascular vas cardiovascular system a nervous system the muscles the bones the joints uh, and the sensory organs okay to 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 process the signals that we that to to accept and process the signals so same case 
if you think of an electronic product, it also needs all these its own systems and devices to ensure that it functions in a perfect manner. Okay. All right. So that's electronic packaging. It's not about packing an electronic product into cardboard boxes. It's much more than that. It's about bringing the different components together and making them perform as per our expectations and perform reliably by protecting them from degradation while it operates in hot in, in adverse conditions and environments. Clear? Okay. So with that, let's move on now to a little more and and see what we are talking about here. Let us move on to the next slide and let us see what electronic packaging means. So, this is from a book by Professor Rao Tumala, again microelectronics packaging <coughs> and here you see what I was talking about. Reliability, <coughs> if you look at the different components, this kind of is a snapshot of the various domains and disciplines that goes into electronic packaging. Okay. Right over here, you see thermal management. Okay, passive, the PWB, which is the printed wiring board, the IC assembly, encapsulation. We are going to talk about that. Okay, there are plastic encapsulated chips, a single chip. That's IC packaging. Okay, so all these things, the board assembly, the materials, design, environment, reliability, manufacturing. These are all part of electronic packaging. The broad field of electronic packaging many a times also called electronic packaging and manufacturing, which is what the title of our course is. Okay. So, the truly multidisciplinary nature of electronic packaging probably is best captured in this slide or in this figure from Professor Tumala's book. Okay. What else? So, if you now think about break it down to the various levels of electronic packaging, I mean the definitions do vary from one school of thought to another, but I think level 1 and level 2 is pretty much uh, what people kind of agree upon is the level 1 is the chip on a chip carrier. Now, what is a chip first? So, what you see here, what I am showing in this cursor is what is known as the wafer, the silicon wafer. Inside the silicon wafer, on the silicon wafer rather, the various circuitries are, are kind of deposited and when I say deposited, I am using that word in a little loose term and then it is diced into this square or rectangular chips or dies, D I E. Chip and die are often used interchangeably. So, let me write that down here, chip or die. Okay. Then this chip comes and then what happens is it goes into what is called a chip carrier. Okay, there is a substrate with various pins and what is called interconnects and then the chip carrier now goes into a wiring board and then the wiring board goes into a chassis and the chassis then has its, um, you know, its enclosures etcetera and forms a complete system. So, these are the different levels of packaging. Okay and level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, this is what we are going to follow, but again I, I want to put the disclaimer here that if you go to through different books, the various levels may be, the nomenclature may vary a little bit, but these are essentially the steps. So, this figure from Professor Daly's book, it is an old book, but one of the very first and comprehensive ones in electronic packaging, that is Professor James Daly, uh, it is called packaging of electronic systems. So, this figure is taken from there. Okay. And you will see this very, very, very widely used by many, many professors and teachers uh, on a, who, who teach electronic packaging across the world. Okay. The same one is being shown a little um, in, in a little more exploded form here that to show the different levels of packaging. Okay. Now, mechanical design aspects of packaging are all these things. So, in our course, we are not going to talk a lot about the electronics part. When we talk about um, 
electronic packaging and manufacturing. The focus of this course are primarily going to be on the mechanical and manufacturing side because unfortunately these aspects are often neglected now no more but for a long time these were often done later they were not considered at the design phase and later on these were found to be bottlenecks okay so if these are neglected at the initial stages you are going to you probably can get into catastrophic consequences where your product may fail much earlier than its predicted lifespan okay so all these become very important connections we are going to talk a lot about this what are the different kinds of connections that happen <coughs> from the device to the substrate to the motherboard across between devices and so on and so forth manufacturing how do you manufacture all these connectors how do you manufacture these printed wiring boards and and various other components thermal management which is where i have done some work and thermal management is very very important because 70% of failures of electronic products can be attributed to overheating okay maintenance shock and vibration ergonomics the product may not fail but if you cannot use it because it's so hot especially for handheld products then it's a non ergonomic design clear if the fan noise in your desktop computer is so loud that you cannot even sit next to it it is so irritating and so disturbing then it's not an ergonomic design and environment is designed based on environment okay uh, a desktop computer probably functions in my office or in in, in the air condition lab <coughs> in the department or in the school whereas the military electronic products operate probably in the desert at 50 degrees scorching sun or maybe in the siachen glacier at the border okay so the design for products for these conditions will be different than the design for a product that is for for uh, operation in an indoor controlled environment okay so designing for the environment is very very important okay so i hope you understand that you appreciate that part okay so let us now end this uh, lecture with a little bit of a discussion on the formation of a wafer which is the first one the wafer was that circular disk if you recall made of silicon how is it made in the first place this is still not packaging but definitely part of manufacturing electronic manufacturing uh, where we are talking about the most elemental starting point when we talk about an electronic product how is the wafer formed okay the wafer the silicon wafer forms or is formed the one of the most common methods is known as the i think the pronunciation can be very different. i mean pro, i i still don't know what is the correct pronunciation it's a check uh, scientist jan chokrovsky is what i i know but if if a check person pronounces for it will be a little different so it is named after uh, jan chokra jan chokrovsky and discovered in 1916 it's a pretty old method that way okay so how does it work it works if you take ultra pure silicon in a crucible and if it's a doped silicon if you want a p type or n type doping if you recall that you add a group 3 or a group 5 element to the silicon which is the dopant impurity atoms in precise amounts okay the doping has to be in precise amounts you put it in that crucible and then you melt it by some heating mechanism it's a crucible hot crucible you have to really heat it to very high temperatures okay after that what happens is the seed crystal comes close to this crucible and this heat crystal when it comes in touch it rotates okay and as it is rotated it is also pulled upwards okay and during this motion the molten silicon kind of attaches and this can be analyzed using fluid mechanics it attaches to this rising crystal and forms what is known as the ingot in this manner so you see this pictures okay this is how the ingot is formed and you slowly pull it out okay so i'm going to show you uh, again a schematic from wikimedia and this is how it is but i think this video will make it more clear so let me play this video
A silicon wafer is a thin piece of semiconductor material which is used in fabrication process in integrated circuit. There are two different methods can be used to grow an ingot of single crystal silicon which are known as Soralsky and float zone method. The following is a summary of the steps in Soralsky process of silicon wafers manufacturing. Step 1. Preparation of high purity of molten silicon. In Swarovski process, high purity of silicon is encouraged to be used as molten to form single crystal silicon. Silicon dioxide can be used to prepare high purity molten silicon. Then, the substance will be heated to its melting point into a crucible made of quartz. The supersaturated molten solution will become the source of silicon wafer. Step 2. Dipping Seed Crystal A small piece of single crystal material known as seed crystal will be dipped into the saturated molten silicon solution. Seed crystal is the equipment used to grow a large crystal of the same material. The large crystal will grow when the seed crystal dipped into the molten, which will then be cooled. Step 3. Pulling the seed upwards. The seed crystal will extract from the molten silicon pool and the rod will be pulled upward and rotated at the same time. During this time, the rod and the crucible rotate in opposite directions to minimize the effects of convection in the melt. In manufacturing single crystal silicon, the temperature gradient, pulling rate and rotation speed influences the size of the single crystal. As the seed crystal is slowly raised upward, the molten silicon will solidify as same as the seed. That is why this process is known as growing, which is producing a new rod of single crystal silicon from molten silicon. The large cylindrical crystal silicon is called ingot or bowl, which can be grown to 300 mm to 400 mm in diameter. Okay, so I, I believe that that was an educational video and it nicely showed how this Chokralski process of, of this growth of this silicon ingot happens. Right. So, this is very important and you know <laughs> when I first learnt about this Chokralski process, uh, the analogy that was given to me by my teacher and which still stays with me till today, uh, I do not know if you have seen in this you know some, sometimes in, in villages even, even in cities also in some of these fairs, you have this candy floss okay. and if you see the way it works, the, the principle of operation is still is the same as that of Chokralski process. You will see there is a wooden stick with a little bit of sugary uh, crystals at the tip and then this whole crucible is rotated. So, here the, the difference over there in this candy floss is, is the crucible with that with the candy floss and the sugar thing that sugary thing that rotates and it, instead of the stick, but otherwise there is a relative rotational motion between the stick and the crucible and then as a result what happens is this whole this cotton like cotton candy flux, uh, cotton candy floss kind of deposits on this stick using that small seed of sugar particles that are uh, you know smeared on that on that stick to start with. So, here it is the same thing except that the rotating piece is this stick okay, uh, which which contains a seed crystal instead of the crucible. Okay. All right. So, what is done is this ingot once it comes out, see how big it can be. This is actually a person standing over there and this can be long, this can be like 2 meters, 2 and half meters long. Okay. And the diameter can be very wide. I have a, at least I, I uh, when I used to work for Intel or when I started, at that time they still had a 1 foot wafer, 12 inches that was the largest wafer that they were talking about and the other was the 8 inches. So, 12 and 8 were the standards. Okay. And then as we know that this cylindrical ingot that you see, this is diced, okay. this is diced into small thin disks okay, of a few hundred microns on which you have, you, you deposit the circuitry on one end and then you dice it off. Okay to give or, 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 to, to, or to generate those uh, square or rectangular microchips. Okay. So, once again let me go back a little bit to this uh, picture over here. So, once you take that ingot and slice it into this circular disk, this is how it looks that is the wafer. Then you deposit the circuitry and then you again using some laser cutting tool, 
you kind of dice it into these smaller chips which is which can be circular or rectangular okay and after that the level 1 packaging comes into picture where the chip goes on a chip carrier then it goes on a substrate to a motherboard which which is what we are going to discuss quite a bit uh, as part of this electronic packaging course especially the first half okay so let me move down to this one and this is uh, the last slide that i had today and so in summary that brings us also to the end of the introduction module so if you what did we do as part of the introduction module we started with a discussion on the electronics industry we saw how wide and in through various segments how electronics has proliferated whether it's our daily lives whether it's military whether it's aviation uh, spacecraft so on and so forth okay after that we spent some time discussing that what is electronic packaging okay what is the definition of an electronic packaging but more importantly what does electronic packaging involve and through some discussions we were able to appreciate that it is an extremely it's a highly multidisciplinary field of activity that requires expertise from various uh, fields of science and technology right and then we looked at the various levels of packaging and the first one was to first of all was to generate this die from a wafer and to start with you have to go back and find out how a wafer is made and that led us to the discussion on chokralski process uh, by which a silicon ingot is grown from pure or precisely doped silicon and then from there you slice the ingot to give rise to these wafers and from the wafer you further dice it using laser cutting to give rise to these individual dies okay so that kind of brings us to the end of this introduction module and these are two references to two books that i refer to um, both quite old now james daly's book is actually very good and comprehensive it's a one of the first texts in packaging but still very very good unfortunately it's out of production to, to the best of my knowledge it is out of print now and uh, fundamentals of microelectronics packaging by professor tumala first edition is where i took the figures from and which is what i have referred but i think there has been subsequent editions uh, that has come out thereafter and this is also a good book this is an edited book by the way it's not by a single author professor tumala is the editor uh, and he has written quite a few chapters in that book but uh, again a very comprehensive volume of knowledge okay so with that i would like to come to the end and thank you very much for your for your attention i hope you are able to learn and appreciate what electronics packaging is and in the next lecture we will move on to the next topic under electronics packaging thank you very much